Guys, Rainer says he lost with like Broodlord Infester Ultra versus 20 Stalkers and 10 Immortals. This is going to be fucking hilarious. All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. A lot of you struggle on the ladder, but no one struggles more than Rainer. Rainer is just a poor Italian boy with very little spaghetti, and he needs more spaghetti. And we're going to help him grow that spaghetti. Right now, it's a skinny spaghetti. We're talking little skinny. We need a thick, thick spaghetti. We need to get that Italian fucking tentacle action going hardcore. That's what you need to do. Berserk. So he sent us this replay. He says, I need coaching. He hasn't asked a question, which already tells you Rain is a shit student, doesn't even know what he's done right and wrong. Uh, already we're going for a 16 hatchery, which is good. If you if you don't mind having to take your third, if you get blocked, gets away with the 16 hatch. His opponent has gone for a gate scout, which is the most virgin opening. This is a very safe opening for Protoss if you're afraid of getting 12 pulled, which makes sense because Rainer is a cheeser. So Protoss player playing safe could be like a Showtime type character, though the MMR is a little bit low for Showtime. Do we know who this is, chat? Rainer, let us know if you know which Protoss player this is. I would guess from the fact that he sent this to me and he needs help that he lost. So I think what he actually did, I think it's actually Gung Fu Banda, because we know that Gung Fu Banda is basically Rainer's nemesis, has a 17 to 0 in tournaments record, 306 to 12 record on the ladder against him, and Rainer just can't get the better of him. So. We'll see uh, who actually plays in this. Let's fast forward a little bit and figure out. So, so far, it's a pretty standard opening. And Rainer is going to be going for a quick link speed. This is your classic. Probably goes for a hatchery about 32 supply, I would guess. Two queens. Four zerglings. Link speed starts. Pulls all three off gas. Solid opening. Now, notice we've got the overlord on the left side. So, we can hide on the pillar. Um, he sees no warp gate spinning until 225. So, he knows it's a stargate build as well. Um, so that's that's going to be pretty solid. You know you're against Stargate. You know kind of what track of build you're on. You're going to go for a third base here. Okay, so already nubbed it, guys. Look at that. Uh, Rainer did ask a question, guys. He said WTF in chat, apparently. Guys, 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 what is this? Are we watching Dark? We're at 300 minerals and the drone's here. Hello? 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 Eight second delay on the hatchery. <laughs> no. All right, everybody knows, guys, when you're playing these openings, you take, you take, you take not this drone, the next one that you build, and you rally that to your third. That drone pops out at the perfect time to take the third. I bet it's that drone that he sent anyway. Let's check. Oh, that's a Zergling. Okay, you got to send him. Yeah. No, he sent it at exactly that time. I'm wrong. Damn it. Send it earlier. Oh, it's because he built it on, on 30 supply. Oh, that's why. He built the hatchery when he could have built two more drones, so he nubbed it. Ah, he nubs it. Ah, he nubs it. Ah. He, Rainer says 32 hatch is better if you know the guy will YOLO two adapts. 30, 32 hatch is always better, isn't it? Well, but the, the thing is, you delayed the two drones by, by building the hatchery from there. So you could have built the two drones, then you could have built the third, mate. Mate, we've already found slight weakness in your build. What's going on? See, you have two lava and no minerals because you decided to build the hatchery. This is why you lost. You could have had two drones mining seven seconds earlier. Mate! Lam oh, come on. I don't tell me this isn't what Lambo does when he coaches you. Don't tell me this isn't what Lambo... I Lambo is the kind of guy who will be like, y your overlord was 0.7 seconds late. Come on, that's 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 number one Zerg. That's what Zerg coaching is. That's what Zerg coaching is. Your drones were two seconds late. So we've already found a bit of weakness. We're going Creep Tumor first on the natural. Great way to defend. Uh, we have seen double Chrono, so we know to go up to eight Zerglings as well, which we're doing at the perfect time to be super duper safe. Arguably, you could be a little greedier than this. We're going to 10 Zerglings, so we're being omega safe. Okay, cool. We're definitely... This is Showtime, right, guys? This feels like a Showtime build from our opponent. I don't know control groups of players, though. Five Stargate, one Nexus, two Gateway, three Adepts, four Probes. So Lings come forward. We don't lose any of them. Really perfect link pullback timing. Great drone pullback timing as well. Um, good micro on the adepts. Oh, pretty good link micro. Yeah, that was a great hold. We're droning during it as well. Oh my god, I can't believe we lost a drone there. That's kind of bullshit. I, I. Oh my god, how is this still going? Protoss! Protoss! Those two adepts actually did really well. How could we have defended that better? Christiania? Uh, or Christiana? As, as people get angry because I kept calling Christiania. So people... 
I, 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 I don't know, man. I see all those, those, those little vowels towards the end of that name. I call them that. So anyways, okay, so, so how do we defend this better, guys? I think we should send some Zerglings in the main, right? I don't think we should have all the Zerglings on the natural necessarily. Also, that queen should start a step a little bit, right? So we should have attacked, moved, attacked, and then maybe we get one or two more queen attacks on the Adept. It's small, but it makes a difference. To get earlier warning, this Overlord also could be further out if we're not worried about like a Void Ray opening. It'd just give us a few seconds earlier warning. Same with that Overlord, also could be moving a bit further out as well. Um, these Adepts are going to shade into the main base here now. But yeah, we definitely want to split at least these Zerglings. I think once you got Sixlings on the front, the next four should already be rallied into the main. I think if you already have a few there in the main, it's going to be good. Yeah, I think if you even have th like th four Zerglings up here already on top of these Adepts, this is going to go a bit better for you for sure. It was still good for me, Pig. Nah, I wouldn't... Wait, you think this is good? You lost a drone, spore trick, and mining time on both... Two spore tricks, mining time on both mineral lines? Wait, you think this was good? Rainer, we've already found two important things. It's two adepts. It's not... It's not terrible for you, but it just could be better. Would Serral think this is good enough? What would Serral say, Rainer? Rainer, I'm getting you a wristband custom made for the next event we're at. And I'm going to give it to you. You know those what would Jesus do wristbands? It's going to be what would Cyril do, okay? You're going to wear it. And every time you make an excuse, they'll say it's good enough. We're going to look at the wristband, WWSD. What would Cyril do? And he'd say, this is unacceptable. I'm Cyril and I, I lost one drone and two sport tricks. Re, mining time, re. He'd say, oh my God, this is so bad. This is game over. You know, y you know. Um, it's, it's not too bad. Like, often they kill four drones with the two adepts. Chrono to cross, right? And, 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 but, oh, oh, that's, okay, let's check out overlord positioning. One across the map, one there, one there. We've got two overlords going to the front. Where's this overlord going? There and there. Okay, this ring of vision's a bit too tight, I would argue. I think one of these overlords should have been going up here, and then the final overlord should be going down here. What do you think, Rainer? Because I think I don't think we need two overlords in this area. I think we can have like a little bit of a gap between this overlord and this overlord, and that's not a big deal. I, I'm pretty sure getting an overlord up here is a higher priority. Because then we would have known that the Oracle was actually coming back for seconds. Doing a cheeky bugger maneuver. Because obviously it's a bit of a gamble for him. But he, it does pay off a little bit. Not that much. I mean, it's it's actually worth it for you. But it, it, you would have taken no damage, right? If we had the Overlord there. So once again, small details add up. We definitely could fix that. I love that I'm like, Rainer jokingly asked me for coaching and I'm like legitimately like just gonna authoritatively say shit. Like this is what you should do. What is this build, guys? What is this build? What the hell is this build? Dude, this Protoss is a Chad. Christian is a fucking badass. Christian has started as a Polish Rager. By the way, for those who don't know, and uh, who would like, who would like, I don't know, win keyboards and tell his opponents to go fuck themselves and stuff. I think he's much more well mannered these days. But uh, people say, oh, he still is. <laughs> no, Mixu says he's still a bit of a dick. <laughs> I think we should go hive versus this. Says chat. I'm with Twitch chat. Where's your hive, Rainer? Why are you so bad? Make a hive, idiot. <laughs> now I think we can definitely argue. Why the hell is the Rotoron just started? I, I, I think this is pretty blatantly obvious that if the opponent opens single Oracle into five minute third base, we probably should have built a Rotoron a while ago. I, I think I could go out on a limb on this one, Rainer. I, I don't think this one is super high level advice here. I know it's him and he does this, but okay, so you're metagaming, you're delaying the Rotoron as long as you possibly can to be as greedy as possible. Okay. He does this build every game. Dude, this is such an old build. This is crazy. It feels too late though. Surely, don't you want roaches for this? No, oh, no, you've got six queens. There's only one oracle, so we can't triple oracle dive on the queens with it. Yeah, you can defend with queenling. I feel like it would just be better if we were building roaches here though, right? Don't you think it would be better to be building roachy boys? I feel like it would, but up to you. Definitely don't want to fight with the lings until the queens are engaged. So good pullback, good D. Hydrogen. 
We're playing Roach Hydra? Why aren't we playing Mutas? Mutas is uh, so hard for him to deal with. This build is so bad against Mutalisks. I feel like Spire Evo Chamber is a better play rather than Evo Chamber Hydroden. Just in terms of countering his build. Because this build, he's got one Oracle, he's got very limited scouting. And uh, basically, he's just committed to a Mortal Charge Archon, which is naturally weak to Mutalisks. You get A-moved if you go Mutas a lot of the time. I mean, Roach, Roach Ravager should be fine, though. Even if you just go six Mutas, you should be good. Are you going to go Hydra Bane? Um, I mean, people don't usually play Robo Bay for a very long time off this build, so it's unlikely there'll be Colossus or Disruptors. And this can obviously work. It just feels like Hydra Bane is the lowest impact play of them all. I think if you go Mutalisks here, it's a much better play. Obviously, it, it has to be it has to be something where you scout a lot with Overseers and stuff. Like you'd probably want two Overseers dropping Changelings or Overlord Speed to check what's going on. But if you make a, a lot of Roaches and Ravages, you're so safe against this composition. Like, you can't... Re like, like if you're playing heavy Zergling, you'll get A-moved. Queens can get A-moved. Hydras can get A-moved if you don't build enough of them. Roach Ravager can't get A-moved. Rainer, I've seen you defend double the army supply of this composition with Roach Ravager before. Your Ravager micro is, like, best in the world up there with Dark. You, you, I, think, I think Roach Ravager is just the better comp here. It's much safer than playing Hydra Bane. Hydra Bane's not bad. You could still do this with Hydra Bane, but it does give so much time before these Hydra upgrades kick in and uh, less opportunity to strike in. So I feel like you're putting yourself in a position where you really want to deny the fourth base. Going Hive off Hydra Bane can work, but we shouldn't be sitting back so much versus Protoss because Protoss is weak. You want to attack Protoss. You always want to attack them. Roach Ravage is awful because he always goes double Robo. Oh, he does have a second Robo. Okay, I didn't see that. Good call. Um, it's still pretty good defensively for kiting, but yeah, it'll scale really badly. Mm. I don't know, man. I still think Mutas is the play here. No, I think I think Roach Ravager Zergling Mutas is actually just a way better play, man. I think it's a way better play, dude. Nice. Nice catch. Alright, we get a free warp. Did you... Did you send me a replay for coaching when you won? What is this, Rainer? Oh, I forgot, guys. I forgot. It's the same as when he sends me replays to cast. He sent me a replay that he wins. Oh, I knew it. What, there's no way you lose this game. Well, you are playing Hydra Bane into Lurker, which is the NA composition. But still, you can't lose this game, man. It was a prism with four zealots. Wait, wait, wait. He lost another prism with two Archons before that? No. Wait, really? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you actually lose this game? <laughs> no. <laughs> Rainer. <gasps> Okay, I, I have so much respect for you. Showing the world this replay. I mean, yes, you played it on stream, but showing the world this replay. This is Rainer trying to strip himself of all ego right now. Saying, it's okay, guys. I can accept my pain. <laughs> okay, one arc on survived. Dude, how did you lose this game? Yow cheese. I, I would say, though, your whole style lacks any sort of aggressive oomph. I would, I would, I would refer to this as a beta build this is like this is the sort of build jesse lee peterson would ask why it, why it doesn't you know like masculine things and why it wants to be wants to be gay or something like that you know he'd be like why do we want to be a man you're beta you know it, it he'd, he'd, he'd start talking about some of that shit if, if he why are we playing hydra bane into lurkers defensively man come on man go go kill him just go kill. Does he actually sit on three base for this long? This is such a curious play. I didn't realize players got played at 6-5 without taking a fourth or doing a big attack by 8-30. This is actually really cool. So this is not a meta I've seen in a long time. So I, I will admit, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But in general, I think we've committed a bit too much tech without making a big play. 
Like, I'm pretty sure Dark beats this strategy every time by just flying some Mutalisks into the main base and then defending the push with Ravager Micro. Yeah. Hydra Bane on Creep is supposed to be good versus two Robo. The problem is you're so focused defensively on surviving. Do we really need to focus on surviving against this? Roach Ravager Ling Bane deals with this army. Super hardcore. Because it's going to take him so long before he gets like a ton of Archons, right? You've got until about 10 minutes before he hits five Archons. It's only when he hits like five, six Archons where I think you're really in, in a bit more trouble. Um, this fight looks like a good angle, but we could have spread just a little bit more. Oh, I like the links from the left. Not as many as I would like, though. Oh, that's a good, good fight for him. Good storm so far. Oh, but you used all of his storms up. We just need to pull back and make Banelings. Pull back, make Banelings. Pull back, pull back, pull back. We need to make more Banes. Or do we have the numbers? I think, I think... Uh, oh, we've got... Oh, we don't have... Rainer! How many times does this happen in your games? You and Clem are literally the two fast kids who just are so busy clicking with their 555 APM. Not a single bit could be used to make the most important upgrade for their unit composition. What is going on, mate? We forgot grooved spines. I thought you were a grooved brain zerg, not a smooth brain zerg. Oh no. Oh no. He forgot the most important upgrade. They're five range hydras when they could be six range hydras. Oh no. It's such a good angle as well. But I think we should have made a few more banes and pulled back just a little bit maybe. Yeah, I think the northern side maybe took a bit of that. This should still turn good for us eventually. Oh, that storm was real juicy on those hydras, though. Pull the drones, pull the drones, pull the drones, pull the drones. We've got to pull the drones right now. Uh, we just don't quite have enough damage behind the drones. Oh, are we actually just dead right now? Wild. To be fair, we did go four base, 80 drones, hive, lurker den, banelings, hydras. We... At, we did go for a lot of different things. So, I mean, Roach Ravager would have held this push so easily. I know double Robo seems good and it scales good, but if you're using Roach Ravager defensively while shoving with muters, they can't keep up immortal production. Yeah. I actually, I, I honestly think Roach Ravager defensively, like Roach Ravager Ling, he has eight immortals. What? You didn't kill four. You killed two. He had six immortals. And Storm. I don't hold this with Roach Ravager. You can base trade as well. This is so late. You can easily be in his base with Muters and just base trading with Roach Ravager Zergling. And Biles across this army, like you can hold it off with Biles for such a long time. Because you can defend with a much smaller army, keep kiting backwards while a chunk of your army just base trades. Because this is such an immobile force. It's weak to air and it's weak to a guy using cheap expendable units. The problem is you're centralizing your power in a very expensive series of tech units, Hydras, Banes, Upgrades, and Hive Lurkers, while also trying to get a 12 worker advantage um, and fight front-on into an army that is only good at fighting front-on against ground units. I, I stand by that analysis. I'm pretty confident in that. It's a really cool build by him. The double Robo is actually something more Protoss should do because they only cost 150 minerals and 100 gas. Super duper cheap. It's the Immortals that actually cost you a lot. But yeah, it's very hard for them to um, to actually use this army. And, if, and the thing is, once you go muters, you spread them out. And you see the way this army works, right? So if we go back and look at it, the way this army works is it's all about centralizing its power in one big area. The moment you force him to split up, start building Phoenix cannons, batteries, his army is going to split up and you're going to find more small engagements where you can kind of roll in with the Roach Ravager and pick things off and, and, and basic Roach, Roach Ravager Zergling it. And you're just going to find small trades while, while, while saying, okay, now I've got a fourth base droned up, you're only on three bases, and you just avoid fighting, fighting front on and use your mobility. Because he's basically really simplified PVZ down to like a really one Oracle harass, one Archon drop harass, make ball of units and push. And there's so many ways you can dismantle this around just using your movement and mobility. So rather than investing in the more expensive Hydra Bane, I definitely think that's what I would advise is Spire. I am a bit Spire obsessed. I'm Spire curious. The other way you can do it, which would actually be an easy checkmate, is a style that you have used 50 times over the last five years to beat Showtime. So, so basically from like 2019 to 2022, here's how it goes, guys. Showtime plays Rainer. Showtime beats Rainer map one with Charge Immortal Archon. Map two, Rainer gets the easiest win of his life with Swarmhost. 
and, and then Showtime goes back to playing Blink and Reyna wins a standard game. That, there, there was like at least five series I saw that happen. So, Swarm hosts. Maybe, if you want to go Swarm hosts. I, I, he does have a Prism, he's got a single Oracle. It's going to be hard for him to deal. I'd, I'd probably do Nidus Swarm host, I guess. I don't think you can really do non Nidus because the Prism keeps the creep back too much. You could go pure Roach Ravager Nidus Swarm host as well, and I think that would work fine. Yeah. I, I think Mutas is the best call, though. I think Mutas is the best call. Rainer says Swarm host is really bad versus this. Is it, though? They don't really have too much to deal with it. No blink or anything. Swarm host are meant to be really good, man. Skillis agrees that it's bad. What about Mutas? Mutas is good, man. Mutas is definitely good. You know Mutas is definitely good. Do you still disagree with, with Mutt Mutts? Because I, I think anytime someone goes a single Oracle into like a Mortal Charge Archon style, Mutas is always a good play. Yeah. Swatmos would be bad if he still has the Archon drop, says a Jozzle. No. That's, I think in, in people's heads, they think an Archon in a Prism is just everywhere at once. But, uh, yeah. Archon Storm Immortal Rex Locust, like no tomorrow? I mean, if you're throwing the Locust directly into his army. Yeah. But that's not really what Swarm Hosts are for, is it? You not you don't use Swarm Hosts to kill their army. Yeah. I think taking a fourth is always a mistake versus three base all-in, says Legoland. Completely incorrect. Taking a fourth is always the correct call. However, do you need to drone the fourth base fully? Probably not. But it depends how you want to play. I think in this case, it was just a numbers game where if Reyna didn't go for the Hive and just stayed Lair Tech Hydra Bane and takes the fight ever so slightly better, he's fine. I think one of the biggest things against this army, though, is the surround. So if we say, let's stick with this strategy, let's just talk execution. Remember, Raynor could have split his Zerglings to defend the Adepts and been way further ahead. He could have had two drones started earlier and then built his third once his drone got there. So he already could have been at least 60 minerals ahead in this game, which would have been game changing. No, but honestly, um, I think if you brought some units around the left side somehow or waited till he got in a bit deeper and then attacked from there and there, whereas you kind of attacked him... I think if you just let him get a bit further into the open, right? Would have been the, like you could have taken a better engagement because the first engagement, he kind of pulls back and storms you quite well. It does bait out a lot of storms, but yeah. I think we could have we could have spread the army out a little bit more. Like, yeah, because you show yourself. So I would have liked, the problem is if you do that, you're kind of clumping through there and there. You don't get to use this extra space in the middle. That's why bringing some units around the top would be really nice. So I think, yeah, maybe you could have already had your Hydra Bane army split in two and pulled back an army to the north a little bit and morphed some Banelings up there and morphed some Banelings down here. I think if you had two very, two separate control groups going for the Sanger, I think you would have been in a really good spot. Yeah. Could we just do a Rochal in when we see a late third? Maybe. It's not my expertise. And Groove Spines, of course, is huge. Alright, guys. That's me coaching for uh, Rainer today. Rainer, uh, give us a rating out of 10. And any last que any, any last questions in the chat, Rainer? And then let's let's see uh, what, how Rainer... What, does he disagree? Did he learn anything? Does he... Did he... Uh, sorry, I forgot. I should I should cater to my, my students. So here you go. So, guys... A lot of you, I, don't, I know a lot of you don't know, and Raynor doesn't. So basically, Raynor doesn't control group his Hydra Den, and because he builds it in random places, he forgets to make upgrades. So this is why, here's a hot trick, guys. You build your tech all together, and you build it in this area every game. So what you do is, this is a, what we call a system. We build systems in StarCraft so we can have repeatability, and so that we can actually have something we can consistently do every game without making mistakes. So... If we put our Evo Chambers, Banely Nest, Infestation, Rotron, we always put all of our structures, unless we want to use them to wall off, which I guess Evo, Rotron at the front's okay. Build them all in this position. It's the safest from any frontal attack and any drops. And it means whenever you're going to macro, you always go to the same area in your base to make your upgrades. That way, for those who don't know, so Groove Spines, when you click on this in the normal in-game overlay, under just behind where I am, you click down here, there's a Grooved Spines button. It costs 100 minerals, 100 gas. It takes 51 seconds uh, to upgrade. So you want to click that one just after 
sometimes you can even, if you have trouble remembering or anything, just click it right when you start the first upgrade. Cue the second one up just to make sure you don't forget that, and that'll help you out as well. So, um, my grandma could scout it if you put that. <laughs> true. True, 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 my friend. All right, so what's the verdict? Build a Spire. Spire is the best tech in PvZ, but uh, you've just got to be very clever with how you do it. So if you want to play the same style every game, obviously doing Spire is not good for that. But uh, in general, Spire to abuse people who aren't playing Blink, who aren't playing um, multiple Oracles and Phoenix and stuff, usually usually good call. Good call. That's, 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 that's it. That's it, Rainer. Make muters and uh, optimize your opening and make you make the upgrades that are good for your style. How are we rating the coaching out of 10? Verdict is he played better than you. The guy who lost a prism with an Archon in it and another prism with four zealots and had to make a third war prism for his attack. So is it because he didn't make the two drones before the third or because of Groove Spine? So I, I saw Rainer before. He said, what's the verdict? I can't read it till I have a verdict. People are saying, is it this or that? Which one is it, Pig? So here's a crazy concept you guys are going to need to figure out. So basically, StarCraft, okay, much like my water drop sponsor, we have a little box here. So notice here, guys, what is this? This is a rectangular prism, right? Facet or side, 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 side. These are all many sides. Now, what you want to think of is StarCraft is like this box, but it's even more complicated. It has like a hundred sides or even more than that. So it's what we call multifaceted. So what you could, so when you lose a StarCraft game, we like to often go, it's this one. It was this one thing I did, but usually it's also, th there's this one and there's one over here. There's lots of things we can do better. So rather than just improving one thing, we want to improve many things and always seeking to be the best player. Remember guys, WWSD, what would Serral do? He'd, he'd work on many. Not There's not just one. There's many reasons. And remember, if you're thinking, no, there should be one that's more important. Just remember, guys, something that's really important to remember in a game of StarCraft is if you lost a game when your opponent's doing a strategy that they do every game and this happened earlier in the match where their Archons are AFK in the middle of the map and they walk their Prism into your Queens, if you still lose this game where this happens, it's many facets. It's not just one. It's many. Shout out to Rainer for being the big dog and actually sharing this replay with us, though. This is like when a guy does a build that you expect to come and it beats you anyway, it is the most infuriating part of StarCraft. It's what my experience as a washed up old man who loses to 5k players on the daily is. Uh, yeah, so thanks, Rainer, for sharing this replay of you kind of dicking him and, uh, and then getting dicked despite it. The double reverse dickening. It happens. GG, well played, my dude. GG, well played.